this is AOP Productions. This is like a kind of a pr perspective of like, just started the game, kind of didn't. I really like this video. This is his thoughts on the whole overall content of Division 2 at the time. It was made like two months ago, but honestly, this is one of my favorite videos. I really like watching people's people's perspective of being introduced into, into Division because it's, like, it's, uh, it's eye-opening to like see their perspective. How would most people handle the end of the way of life that they normally know? The daily struggles that you deal with no longer matter. The interactions that you've had with people no longer exist. Friends and loved ones you have met before might become enemies or have died. In some situations, it seems like all hope is lost. But in that instance, hope was activated and with that so was i this is my thoughts on the division two you see what i mean though like this is what i'm talking about with like i hope division three captures this exact sense like this exact narrative it's like this is an apocalyptic world you're trying to survive and help people like the true gritness not not what they're doing right now with the story The Division 2 is my first looter shooter I can commit to memory that I probably wouldn't have played if it wasn't for the Steam sale that allowed me to buy the Ultimate Edition of the Warlords of New York Division 2 version of the game for $12. This is another one of the Ubisoft titles that has received multi-year support along with Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor. Around the time of purchasing the game, it was shortly announced that Year 5 content was coming. I went over the 45 hour limit that I set for myself on MMO games. And this is why I strongly urge anybody to try this game out when it's on sale. Try it out. Either that or get a friend that has this game and have them download it and play it. Just play it. You'll see what I'm talking about. I ended up completing the main game up to World Tier 5 and completing the Warlords of New York expansion. I went into this game with the mindset of not using any sort of outside help for good very good very good he did a very good thing here just just experience the game for what it is don't don't look at the other videos yet any questions or issues i had about this game and i had to power through whatever it is i had an issue with all that being said i have something to say about the game that had me confused in the end and i feel like this is the exact thing that everybody probably faced and probably why they were turned off to the series I was genuinely bored when it came to the opening of the game. It felt empty and level locked. Things that I found interesting about the game is that you don't select gaming difficulty. You only select if you want to skip the main game and go directly into the Warlords of New York DLC, which will level skip you to level 30. And you go from there. If you go through the main game, you will be blasted with pop-up screens, and I was kind of overwhelmed, to be honest. Yeah. When I say the game feels empty, aside from the NPCs in the safe house, there is no one else that you interact with. For an online open-world RPG, it feels as if it was a game that I could play single-player offline. Now, the only way I was able to have people along with me on the journey, I would either call for backup or answer someone else's call for backup. This has to be the most fucking worst mechanic they ever applied to the game. It should have been like how Monster Hunter World handles multiplayer, where you call for help and people just join you right, right off the bat, you know? And like, if they're searching for people with, with in that current zone, you can just beam to it. There's no, there's no having to find the mission or anything like that. It sort of has that, but people have to act, people have to actively be looking for people basically asking for help and since the player base is so far is so thin now it's kind of hard to even find a match like that or even or even so it's it's some i think it's also trying to find players that are, that are within the same level so if you're a level 30 or below level 30 or the world world tier if you're still in the world tiers you're probably not going to find a, like a level a shade level 1000 help you out and probably most of the probably the number one reason why that's the case is because you don't want to you don't want to shade level 1000 with you blowing through content meanwhile you're just like in the back just like hey what's up <laughs> you know 
but I will never run into another division agent until I ventured into the dark zone. See, this is at the fault of the fact that, yeah, he's in, he's in the world tier zones where no one's probably world tier anymore. All the veterans are the only ones, are, all the veterans that have been playing this game for years are the only ones actively looking for people to play with. And the only way you can find them is if you're in a Discord or you're in a, you're in a clan and you find out there's people that need help. Other than that, this game does a, does a poor job of, of, of finding people that you can just help through, help with the story. But we will save that for later. Now, the world isn't closed off in the sense that because you aren't the required level to access these regions, that you can't enter. But if you decide to enter and engage with these enemies at a higher level, you will be crushed. So even without doing a mission, it's still a risk to go in these areas. Oh yeah, it's it. I remember this. Fuck man, it's bringing back memories. During the Steam refund window in the Division Two, I was bored and wished that the game lived up to the online open world RPG tag. And here's okay. Tag wait. That they added to the franchise since its initial announcement. This is this is the sad part. This is and, the, and this is going to be controversial. I think the game Division Two does not get good unless you just jump right into New York. After that, it, that's when the game truly 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 shines, and that's when they implemented all the fixes. Before that, oh man, it's it's a very slow burn and very boring, and I feel like that's the main reason people don't really give this game that chance that it needs, because. If they really worked on that storied content and made it, you know, more, more immersive than it was than on the, the, the New York DLC, I feel like it'd be a lot more better experience because it was more streamlined on New York. You could just play it and there was nothing really holding you back per se, you know? Plus the fact that excluding armored enemies with shields or full kits of armor with a huge weapon of some kind, it doesn't make sense why there are three tiers of enemies. Red health bars, basic enemy, no armor, purple health bar, specialized enemy, some armor, yellow health bar, the boss of the mission, or top tier enemy with a shit ton of armor. And if you don't upgrade your guns or gear, you will shoot enemies in the face several times and nothing. Yeah. I would have. This is extremely, extremely bullet spongy, but you slowly understand why that is the case as you go further in the game. Like, as you get more better stuff, you, you slowly realize. Why that is refunded this game if i didn't play 12 dollars for the game with this expansion that normally costs 80 dollars. this is why i highly recommend if you do buy this game bring a buddy with you it'll make the experience that much more better yeah as it as me personally i played this game all the way through solo i never played with anybody i not because i didn't want to i didn't want to like do anything party wise it's just I usually play games like this very solo. It wasn't until like this game's drought of content that's when I actually found a clan, surprisingly, and now have a clan that I go to almost every day to play this game. But instead, I powered through wishing to see if I would find what makes the division too fun and keep the community around for five years after release. By going further into the division two, I definitely became more worried. Uh, here we go. Going beyond the first hour and 45 minutes, there are issues that I had with the game as a new player. Several issues that I had. But I want to focus on three things that if changed, I actually would have liked the game. For me, these are three straws that broke the camel's back. I know people will either agree or disagree with it. If so, I would love to hear what you have to say in the comment section down below. This is a personal pet peeve of mine, where a game, whether a sequel or part of a franchise, just hits you with a skippable pop-up of information that in some cases you could never access. It. Yeah, the game tells, just like randomly tells you information about critical stuff. And there's no way to access this things, access these things again. And then you wonder later on in the game, how do I do this? And then you find out, I don't know how to fucking do this. Then you look online, and then some guy talks about this. There's no like information system 
that tells you anything. The same thing happened in Division One too, but in Division One it was pretty self-explanatory. But in this game, it's it's not. It's <laughs> you're expected to just read everything at the get-go and 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 understand everything at the get-go. <laughs> For me, as a consumer of video games, I will understand that games will never be able to go into extreme detail when it comes to their systems and mechanics. That would take away from the user experience and be unreasonable for the consumer to go through. Yeah, there are players that I still meet today that don't even know that, oh shit, all those skill things that I've been picking up, I can spend those? I didn't know that. It's, it's just because like there's a pop-up that comes up when you're in combat. You're expected to read that. You're expected to, to take the time and read that while you're being shot at. Or or worse, when when comms of, of what's-his-name is telling you how, how to do it and you're in a gunfight and you can't even focus on what the hell he's saying. On the other end of that coin, it seems if games like Diablo 4 and The Division 2 have these pop-ups, which would not give me enough information, it forces me to go to outside help to understand the game, i.e. YouTube. I will say that I'm extremely thankful for the content creators that focus on helping people getting into games that have complicated systems in gaming. And you're never going to find a much more peaceful community with Division 2. Like, I think collectively all of us, even the, even the, the ones that make fun of you in PvP, I'm, I'm pretty sure more than 90% of them are more than willing to help you and talk you through everything if you're confused about something. Division 2 has some of the best people in the community. It's crazy. So on behalf of a viewer of yours, thank you. For the developers, it is hard to strike a balance between information and holding design and ultra relaxed design. For me, the Division 2 is very relaxed with important information. I personally should have went to YouTube for a guide, something like The Division 2 for Beginners in 2023. But I chose to play the game and learn on my own. And good for you for doing that. Because you got you got to you got to experience what everyone else was experiencing and why everyone was was so mad about this game. The problem is as as bad as that sounds because <laughs> i'm putting this game in, in, in a very negative limelight but it's like you, you get to see why this game has a problem and you get to basically join everyone else's uh <laughs> echo essentially to you know fuck i really like this game but god damn it there's a lot of wrong things with it is i didn't really learn on my own Oh boy, dude. The Dark Zone experience. You're either gonna love it or fucking hate it. My problem is not the Dark Zone experience. It's the fact that the rest of the game isn't like the Dark Zone. Within the Dark Zone, your objective is to find contaminated gear in areas that were hit the hardest with the dollar flu. In there, you will find nothing but enemies, including other human playable agents. Now, other agents that you come across are also doing their own thing and could be friendly and different or rogue. You see yep. an agent in the dark zone, stay in cover and keep an eye. Because if you aren't careful, things can get hairy for you real fast. And it's totally like one sided. If you're just a starter, oh, my God, you're going to have a, you're going to have a really bad experience because there's nothing but veterans playing this. Now, all that being said. The main area in the game, you have zero interactions with another human playable agent. You will see them in the safe houses and the base of operations. But unless you're joining somebody's mission or you're sending out a call for backup, you will never just wander into a person in the main DC area. This is why I really wish, I really hope, actually Division 3 does this. They take a book or they take a note out of the Monster Hunter world and how it handled multiplayer. In Monster Hunter, in the Monster Hunter games, it's very emphasized to you at the very beginning of the game that co cooperation, jolly cooperation, is and should be your your point of playing the game. Like it, it shows you interactively and beat by beat like how how multiplayer works, why it's important, 
and why you should do it. This game, it's like, just fucking do it. Nothing. I'm not going to give you shit. Just figure it out on your own. The same thing occurred in the Warlords of New York DLC. Unless I was in a safe house, I never saw a human playable character anywhere on the entire map. And I'm confused because for an online open world RPG, I would expect to see more people online in this open world RPG. Recently, I've been playing a game called Diablo 4. There's some, some things that I could probably think of that they could amend this by creating events, create like live events that happen around the world where that they'll just pop up and not necessarily you won't see any humans go to the event, but once you're at the event, you'll see actual players there, you know, like at a safe house near getting ready to go to the event and you just go and do it with them. That would be pretty cool. Really interactive experience. I, that would be really cool if they did that because that would be more, that would be almost on the line of, of being an MMO shooter, which this game was trying to be. Thoughts coming soon. And at least with Diablo 4, for an online game, I believe MMO as well, not only do I see other human playable characters in the town hubs, but I come across them in my journey. Sometimes I join them for events, gather chests and go on my own separate way, or I can stay with them and try to party up. Yeah, see, I, I really wish that Division did something like that. Maybe it's because of the network's uh, integrity. Maybe because they they had that where it's only it's only four players only. Maybe it's, that's the reason. It, it would be nice if you could do certain missions like a full eight-man team or something like that. It would be cool, like, especially legendaries. If you could do legendaries with an eight-man team, that would be cool. Purely just for shits and giggles. Not some fucking time-running shit. You know, just pure, out of pure fucking just fun. But I've never had that happen in the Division 2. And he's experiencing exactly what everybody else is experiencing, how the game feels extremely empty. That Division 2 was, it, it does, it feels extremely empty. It's just you versus the entire world. And the only reason, and the only way you'll get multiplayer is if you buddy up with a homie. That's about it. Which is weird to me, because aside from the safe house hubs and the base of operations, it felt like an always online single player game and not an online MMO open world game where all these people are coming across the country to save DC and perhaps the rest of the country. Another reason why I think the event thing would be better is because one, if you're just going around the world and people are, or people are traveling with you, they're probably going to one shot everything before you even get to it. And I think that's probably the reason, the main reason why they don't, they don't do stuff like that because it's heavily skewed. Like if you've been playing the game for a long time, you're going to kill everything before everybody else can. So that's probably the case why they did that, but it's, it would be nice to see other random players team up with you just randomly, you know. From total collapse. But see what I mean? They could easily fix that with the mechanic that Monster Hunter World brings you. That was a huge disappointment in the Division 2. No matter how I feel about a game, there will always be something that I can find enjoyable. Now these things were not able to change my overall feeling of The Division 2, but they were still enjoyable nonetheless. If you agree or disagree, I would love to see what you have to say in the comments down below. These are the three things that I liked about The Division 2. Now I do have my problems with the way Ubisoft does games, especially their open world games. To me, they make these open world games feel empty and fill it with a bunch of things on the map to collect, to explore, that just feels like padding for the main pieces of the game's content. The Division 2 does that, but the in-lore reason of having me walk the entire DC Metro map with the only way of fast travel is from safe houses to safe house. Makes yeah. sense. It's because everything collapsed. Realistically, 
how would you still have cars that have gas in intersections and areas? Society is on a thread. It would be kind of unrealistic for you to have some sort of transportation tech. See, this is why I have a problem with the Black Tusk having Humvees in trailers. It's like, okay, if you're if these guys are able to travel around on these things, then why can't we capture a Black Tusk outpost and steal their vehicles? Or better yet, why can't we have their their electric bikes or something like that? I'm pretty sure the Black Tusk probably have something like that. You know, like, why can't we have that? Now you can fast shuttle the missions and you can fast shuttle directly to missions and to, and to safe houses. But like, if... <sighs> If they're going to show that in trailers, then they ha it has to make sense, and it doesn't make sense. That doesn't require the natural resources we're used to, like gas, electricity, to an extent. But there's another reason why I liked The Empty World. I was getting Resident Evil 3 Nemesis vibes. The size of the city, the, the scale that they were able to build with the DC area. I just wish there was some kind of zombie DLC as a Resident Evil fan because, like, imagine this, right? The dollar flu mutates because of a device that you collected during the Pentagon side mission. <laughs> There's a huge debate about this too within the community that it wouldn't make sense. It nobody wants 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 to have a zombie mode in this game, but it's like, dude, if they did this like every Halloween, like one like a as like a one off. I mean, it was even teased during the Resident Evil event when it came out that there that the Kenley College was gonna was supposedly gonna be overrun by zombies, and it was gonna it was just gonna be an event. That was it. It was highly incentivized that that that's what was gonna happen. It never happened. Everybody was let down. All we got was just cosmetics. We got masks. We got RPD apparel. That's about it. Nothing else. And it, and it sucks because they heavily eluded that Kenley College is going to be overrun by zombies or, or there was going to be a zombie event of some kind. I don't know why they showed that. Maybe because they knew that everybody was going to think that. They were, we, we were finally going to get some zombie event otherwise that would have been cool as just a one-off event that just shows up every year like like golden bullet you know just have it show up it would have been it would have been cool and with that it changes people and it evolves into the division two zombies or the division two undead nightmare something right but the thing is though a lot of the community don't like this idea they hate this idea of ever introducing zombies into a Tom Clancy game. But it's like, if it's just a one-off event, that's more than fine. Come on, like, just have a little fun. But it would be interesting because they have the scalability. I feel like I'm in the DC metro area, even though I've never visited it. And that's something I have to give credit to them. The city feels like a city. It doesn't feel like a city block like in Resident Evil 3, the remake. And for me, the issue I can tell is that by going down that route, it pretty much forsakes the Tom Clancy name. But yeah, see, it, it, it's exactly what I was talking about. It's like it, the notion of putting a zombies in a Tom Clancy game. How dare you? What are you thinking? <laughs> With the size of the city, the gear that you could possibly have, to me, it could have been a spiritual successor to Undead Nightmare. But I think more recently, it would probably be similar to Rainbow Six Extraction. This might be a weird thing to praise games for, but for me, Ubisoft is one of the only companies that can release a game that can end up having multi-year support think about it it's multi-year support however it's gonna be borderline boring content but it, yeah it's 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 uh it's supported <laughs> rainbow six siege released in 2015 around the same time as call of duty black ops 3 and we're still fucking playing it to this day dude or at least i'm still playing it to this day like <sighs> Fuck man, the amount of negatives in this game and I still fucking play it every day. It's insane. And instead of getting another Rainbow Six game, it got updated year after year. 
from 2015 2022. In that same time, we've had Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty World War II, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, Call of Duty Black Ops... Call and this goes to show, like, what... Whose audience this game is, is taking when he's, mentioning, when he's mentioning the Call of Duties. Have you noticed that? Most Call of Duty players, if they want a more laid-back experience, they want a more chill slash casual experience the game they'll go to there or the game that they'll quote unquote discover funny enough is the division i i find that so funny cold war call of duty vanguard and call of duty and i know this because this is exactly what happened to me right after black ops right after modern warfare yeah right after right after the death of black ops 2 really i i didn't know what else to play Modern Warfare 2 2022. Now, during that time, instead of creating a new game every year or several Rainbow Six games, they focused and refined the game. Now, whether the community agrees or disagrees with the direction of the game is a different story. But the idea of sticking with the game for years is becoming a rare treat for a lot of triple-a games now the division two for me even if i had some issues the fact that i was able to go over the 45 hour time limit is because i wanted to explore more of the game i wanted access to these missions the raids the strongholds the side missions the warlords of new york dlc there was content that i wanted to see and experience and i think that's a really big credit <laughs> to Ubisoft. The Division 2 is a game that brings a lot of value, especially for being around for five years plus. At times, it definitely felt like a drag doing the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. and during those times, I definitely wanted to quit the game and not even work on this video. But that Steam sale, the $12 purchase, was the one thing that kept me pushing forward. And I'm glad that I did. The game can be fun, but for a new player like myself, I should have looked online for help understanding the game mechanic. The people online, whether it's YouTube, forums, or anything, were able to give me more information than the game ever could. For anyone who is going to get into The Division 2, Look for help online or with your IRL buddies that are already playing the game. I guarantee you, you will understand and more likely enjoy the game when you learn more about it. And I think being hard-headed hurt my experience more than helped. For me, The Division 2 is greater than the sum of its total parts. I definitely had fun playing in the game, but I had fun playing the game in spurts. Yeah. Now, for the price of $12, <laughs> the Division 2 Warlords of New York Ultimate Edition is absolutely worth the price. Yes, it is. The now amount it is. of content that you receive in this game is astronomical. And not only that, Year 5 content is officially out by the time I'm recording this video. But for the price of $80 without a Steam sale, I wouldn't recommend the game. I don't think $80 for the game, especially with the, uh, the, the forcing of your hand that you have to go to outside sources, you have to go other places to understand the game instead of within the game itself, I probably wouldn't recommend it at $80. If there's a sweet spot, like just now did you see how that emotes tip just posted up it was only up there for less than like five seconds grant and he's also in the open world and there's potentially an enemy faction around the corner you're not going to see that like and there's no way to even go back and find that you just <laughs> you have to go into the key binds and like oh what activates my my, my emotes oh there it is you know <laughs> 
Like, I, I really hope when they make Division 3, they they look at these other games, especially like Monster Hunter World, especially when it comes to multiplayer, that they really take a page out of that book. Because if if multiplayer was a lot like Monster Hunter World, in which you just summon a beacon and people are able to just find that randomly while they're looking for missions to help people with, that would be a much more great experience. Because it's, it's on a cooldown, essentially, to find find new matches to help people anywhere between 40 to 20 bucks if you see it on a steam sale i would grab it yeah if you find this game on on a sale and it's like 15 bucks 18 bucks get it don't get anything more you should not have to spend 20 bucks or more on this game because the content that it is that it has now it's not even worth the the full price tag that it comes with it really isn't now be aware because the game came out in 2018 there is no crossplay even though I had a pop-up that said the game is crossplay between PC and Stadia. Which so stupid. Which no longer exists. If you're playing it on PC and you have friends on Xbox, you are shit out of luck. Overall, yeah. I had fun playing. That's another thing that Division 3 ne needs to implement. It needs, it needs, it has to. It has to have crossplay. It has to. I don't care what anybody says where it's like, oh, console players pvp blah, blah blah then you know what set up a setting that all of these call of duty games are doing where you only play with your specific console or your that or that you play with your your whatever like you only play with xbox players or you only play with playstation players set that up every game that has crossplay is setting that up when it has to do with multiplayer so they should they have no reason to not implement that the division two but I hampered my own experience by being too prideful. I would recommend people play The Division 2 if they have it and they haven't played it in a while. For anybody who is thinking about picking it up, I would say wait for a sale. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, whether or not you like The Division 2, you like Ubisoft games, you like what I had to say in this video. I can't wait to read what you put down below. And finally, I will be reviewing The Division 2. And in the future, I will be giving my thoughts on The Division 1. Thank you so much for coming out today. And please make sure that you're always on point. This is such a good video, dude. I even like I even commented on this guy's video when I first saw it. Yeah, see, I put right here. So you're like, funny enough, they teased you and alluded to that Kenley College is going to be ha is going to have a zombie event during the Resident Evil collab, but never happened either because they lied. Or zombies just don't work in this realm. But a spin-off event year-round, that shit would be sick. As to the start of content, I honestly applaud you for going through it with with it rather than boosting to New York. Playing it again, and again from the beginning does a poor job of making you feel like you're in a you're in a living world. I feel like that's what people miss the most from Division One. Yeah, see. But then, hey, if it doesn't happen, I can still dream for a modern version of RA3 Nemesis. It doesn't count. Yeah. So you like, yeah, two months ago. Oh, so I saw it on release. Yeah, dude, this, ah, uh, fucking A, man. Dude, this is such a good video. Like, I highly recommend you guys go and watch it. AOP Productions. And as far as I know, this guy's probably pretty relatively new to making videos from what I've seen. He only has a handful of videos up already. But, um, yeah, like, seeing people's experience firsthand at the Division 2 is really interesting, because I hope, I hope, some of the devs are looking at these videos particularly to see what they have to accomplish in Division 3. I mean, if not, I mean, they already know, they already have a handle of it, they're already in good hands, but it would be nice if they checked out some of these, like, videos from, like, people who don't have a lot of subs and see their firsthand experiences. Division three needs 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 a lot of work, man, to to get all these guys back. I I hope they do it right. <laughs>